All right, welcome to the first episode of It's a Map, where we're going to be drawing fantasy maps, talking about how to construct them, how to make land shapes that look good, how to make realistic looking countries uh, for adventuring. If you're writing a fantasy novel or maybe a role-playing game campaign, this is a useful um, skill to have. And even if not, it's a lot of fun. I've been drawing them for years just as entertainment. So what I'm using here is a large piece of poster board, um, which I feel is about the right size, about the right shape, the right consistency. Uh, it's nice and thick, so it stands up under erasing. Um, it looks good when you can put it on a wall. It's not too flimsy. What I'm going to be working on today is a new uh, landscape, a new continent, uh, designed for a friend of mine, Burke, who is starting a new Pathfinder campaign and he needs a new continent. So I'm gonna be working on that today. I'm gonna be making it up as I go. I usually feel that's the best way to work on them. I've done some sketches ahead of time, but I threw them out because when you sketch out what you want a map to look like ahead of time, it takes away the excitement. Drawing a map is a lot like exploring, figuring out what's over the next mountain range, what's over the next horizon and doing it ahead of time really takes a lot of the fun out. So I just disregarded that and I'm just going to be making this up as I go. I'll be talking about what I'm thinking as I'm designing it. So my instructions for this world so far are pretty simple. He wants one large continent with an area in the southeast that's kind of cut off from the rest of the world. Not on an island necessarily, but um, maybe mountain ranges or treacherous territory. Uh, so it's a bit isolated hard to get to. But right now we're going to start in the northwest of this continent. Um, due to my camera setup, this is going to be upside down for you. Um, but that's the way it is. Maybe I can flip it around later. We'll see if that works. All right. Um, so we're just going to work on the northwest quadrant for now to figure out what this should look like. What kind of people would live up here? It's northern. I'm going to guess that it's fairly uh, cold relative to the rest of the rest of the continent. Let's see. Um, cold enough that long fjords have formed due to glacier activity pushing glaciers down ravines, carving out long pieces of land. This is one of the reasons why a lot of northern countries like Norway and Sweden up in the north have very interesting jagged coastlines. I always like those coastlines, they're a lot of fun. So I'm going to be doing something like that here. I assume the people living in this part of the world are very hardy people. You would have to be to live this far north in this kind of climate. I may actually be a part of the campaign that my friend is going to be using this world for later, so I'm very motivated to make it interesting, you could say. fairly interesting. Mm -mm -mm. I want the scale of this map to be 
quite large. This should be a whole continent. This should take a long time to cross. I'm not exactly sure exact what the scale is precisely yet, but um, I know I want it to be large. You know what? Let's cut off this part. Make a bit of a peninsula here. That's a bit more interesting, I think, of a shape. Peninsulas, bays, inlets, all good things. They make things more interesting. Okay. Hopefully this is dark enough to see clearly. I'm not going to do this too dark because I'm going to go over it with pen later once I've figured out where the thing should go. You don't have to watch me going it over in a pen. Don't worry about that. I'll probably do that in between videos. But I want you to see how I construct areas. Okay. General land shape for this area, for this northern area. Um, usually my next step is to figure out mountains um, your, or other important terrain. That tends to shape a lot of the other features, rivers, where cities are going to go, where forests are going to go, you know, or swamps, um, hills, things like that. A lot of this dependent on where mountains are. Mountains control the weather, they control trade, they control um, the way cultures move. So there's a lot of importance um, to that. Okay, here. Let's add some mountains. Mm -mm -mm. Not too many mountains in there, but some mountains going down in this direction. And some mountains up in here. generally very mountainous up here. One of the reasons for the glaciers. But a mountain range definitely going along this coast. Gotta make big decisions sometimes, as Bob Ross would say. These aren't happy little mountains, these are scary mountains. I draw mountains pretty simply, just keep them with pointy shapes. Makes them easier to draw, speeds up um, the design of the world a bit, which is good, because you want to be able to sort of um, design from the hip, so to speak. Design with your gut. You don't want to overthink the shape of your landforms too much. Otherwise, they start looking a bit unnatural. How the mounts kind of overlap a little bit. Vary the size of the mountain so it doesn't look too monotonous. It can be tempting to just have small geological features and scatter them about, but often it's a good idea to have large ones um, that kind of set the tone for large areas of the world. 
It makes things a lot more interesting, I feel. All right, up here, very mountainous. I went and visited Iceland a year or two ago, and it was quite startling um, how rugged the terrain is, especially in these kind of northern areas with a lot of uh, glacial activity. But I can't be afraid to do that. It doesn't mean they're, they're inhabited. You can certainly live there, but it'll be a lot tougher. Perhaps some non-human races. Moving up in this area. This region comes together. You don't want to have too many s mountain ranges close together. They usually don't form that way, I think. If an area is formed by geological activity, they'll tend to make large ranges kind of merge together. At least that's the way it seems to me. I'm not an expert on geology. This is mostly from looking at maps and just what seems reasonable. Though, so I should probably study more about geology. It would certainly help my maps. And other things like that, like the way forests grow, forest patterns, river patterns, things like that. A lot of nature tends to form in uh, large patterns. Um, there are certain trends and the kinds of shapes that features in nature, both natural and geological, uh, tend to show up in. Hmm. It's looking a little bit like Middle Earth right now. Maybe if that was the Misty Mountains or something like that. Um, but let's avoid that happening. Have the mountains thin out a little bit as we go down. Not quite as tall. Perhaps turn into some foothills. You want to have a variety of geological features. When I used to make maps, it was either just like mountains or plains, but of course that's unrealistic. There can be lots of other shapes as well, and those are just as important. You want to add hilly areas or rough terrain. Um, that's important. Some rough areas over there. Okay, 
that's good for now. Uh, I think we have enough interesting things happening. Um, next stage is usually rivers, because rivers uh, determine where things like forests and towns and other things happen, swamps. Water formation is very important um, in the shape of your world. Naturally, that would make sense. So let's try and figure out where our rivers ought to be going. Now, there's different ways you can draw rivers. Um, a lot of people just draw them as a single line. Um, I often draw them as two lines next to each other, sort of show a course of a river. Um, in this case, I think I'll stick with the one line. The problem with drawing with two lines next to each other is it um, decreases your scale or increases. I don't know what I want to say. It makes it look like you're closer in. If, the, if you can see the width of the river, you're probably a lot zoomed in than if you can only see it as a line. At least that's the impression that it gives. So I'm probably just going to stick with one lines. Um, right, let's have a river coming out of the mountains here. Exit over there. <clears throat> All right, that's good. Um, Another river or two coming out of the mountains. I'm going to assume that quite a few rivers coming out of these mountains. See what else. River flowing south from here. There it goes off in that direction. over this way. Alright, that looks good to me. Let's add a little bit of water in here. Rivers on this side. Less rivers, I'm going to say that a lot of the wind and the clouds move in from the sea. Um, and these mountains kind of stop them from moving over. So this area is a lot drier and more barren. Um, not a desert. I mean, we're still fairly far north. I guess it might be a desert because there's not a lot of rain falling, so technically it would be a desert. But not with sand or heat, as we typically think deserts have. Um, just a sort of cold, uh, more of a wasteland. But we do have glaciers up here, so we can do some glacier melt, perhaps, flowing south. Culminating in perhaps a large lake, that would be interesting. a river or two coming out of these hills. Also joining into the lake. But then in here it's going to be fairly uh, desolate. 
area, which is uh, interesting and a lot of fun. Mm, all right, I think I'm good with rivers. I think I'll pause there for the rivers. One thing that I like doing is around our coastlines, sort of add another lighter border. It looks a bit like waves breaking on the shore. And it helps clarify where the shore is. You can add two or three of these. I'm just going to add one for now so you can sort of see what I'm talking about. happening on this peninsula yet. That's looking pretty good. Okay. Um, for the next step is going to be um, forests probably and other things like swamps, um, plains, so uh, lesser geological features. And then after that you would probably add cities. Uh, habit human habitations, and then probably roads. Um, usually in that order, because that's the order that they would be created in real life, or that's the order of importance, how they inter influence each other. The rivers would influence where the forests are. Um, the shape of the forest would be influenced by where human habitation is, because they would cut down forests or use them. Human habitations are also usually near rivers, usually at the mouths of rivers or at intersections of rivers. Uh, that way you have clean water, and you have easy transport, so that's quite common. Um, and then of course roads would follow from where the, the habitations are. And then the things like the mountain ranges would tell you where the roads were, because it would be difficult for roads to get through mountains. Um, the shapes of the different geological features would tell you what the different climates look like, and hence how densely populated and the kinds of people that lived there. So um, we'll probably get to those in the second video. But I, if I want to leave with one thing, it would be to, when you're creating a world, create it in um, the proper order. That usually makes it look more realistic. If you start with just drawing some cities on a map and connecting them and then trying to add some mountains in an interesting place and then, and then maybe a couple of ri a river or two, um, you could do that. It's much trickier to make it look plausible because that's not the order that those things um, would exist in real life. It's not the order that they would um, they would influence each other in. One thing influences each other, which influences something else, which influences something else. Um, there's an order. And if you draw them the things in that order or close to that order, then they will look more plausible. And your map will be more true to life and more interesting to adventure in.